dialysis catheters. When I first started dialysis nursing, I'm like, yes, a catheter. I love catheters. I will always have access. Catheters are awesome. And then as the days and the years went on, it turned into like all rats, a catheter. So let's just do a few housekeeping things about dialysis catheters. Um, when you see a dialysis catheter, number one, you need to assess for infection fevers, chills, nausea, vomiting, you need to look at that catheter site and make sure that there's no redness, no pus. Um, so that's that's like the number one thing with catheters. So that's like the most, um, what's the word I'm looking for, politically correct thing to say about catheters when you're assessing them. The other thing that you need to do as a dialysis nurse, whenever anybody has a dialysis catheter and they are ESRD, they are stage five, they're going to be on dialysis for the rest of their life or until they get a transplant, you need to talk to them about their permanent access plan. Some patients have been on dialysis for a long time and they've gone through fistulas and grafts and they can no longer have one, so they are going to have a long-term catheter. I'm talking about like chronic catheters now. So if their veins are too small, they're elderly, um, they've tried to get a fistula and the fistula will not mature or they end up with steel syndrome, though that's another category of people that will end up with a chronic catheter, a long-term catheter. And then some um, other people that just will never have a fistula, and I've been running into this a little more lately, are people that maybe have dementia or Alzheimer's and they cannot follow directions. They um, cannot be re redirected and they won't, uh, they won't keep their arms still. So for those people, having a fistula is not safe because there's a lot of blood flowing through that fistula. And if, it, if the needles become dislodged or if they start bleeding, it, it could cause their death. The other thing, so, you know, we've assessed all that with our patient and maybe they're new to dialysis. They've been there like 90 days or less. You need to, every single time they're there, talk to them about their permanent access plan. Do you have, are you thinking about peritoneal dialysis? Let's talk about PD. Is this, are you gonna keep coming to the clinic for hemodialysis? We need to talk about getting you a, an ultrasound of your arm and getting you an appointment with a vascular surgeon so he can assess for permanent access. Cause what, what else do we know about catheters? the longer they're in, the higher risk for infection that they have. And usually uh, CMS gives us the 90 day mark. After 90 days, the risk of infection skyrockets. So that is one of the reasons why we need to get a fistula in as soon as possible. What else? So when you're talking to the patient and it's a lot of information for them, you know, they just started this major life change. They just started dialysis and um, sometimes you, you kind of want to go slow and steady with all the education and one of the first things that you need to talk to them about and kind of like put the bug in their ear and be like, hey, we need to get going on a fistula because a blood infection is a big deal. It can knock you down and you can be hospitalized and you can die. So let's, let's keep talking about that. All right, so when I first started dialysis nursing, I was always like, yes, oh my God, they have a catheter. This is awesome. I will always have access. I'm not gonna have any problems. And then the more experience that I had, I'm like, oh my God, a catheter. Catheters are not perfect. They can be very positional, especially if you're in acutes, if you're in the hospital and they have a temporary line in their neck or in their femoral and in their leg, you're just, they can be very positional and very hard to have a smooth treatment without a lot of alarms with that pump stopping and starting all the time. Um, other catheters, you know, sometimes, you know, they're, they're good for a while and sometimes they need to be replaced. The longest I've ever seen anyone with a catheter, and this was like a miracle. She took such good care of her catheter is five years. And when it was time for the catheter to be exchanged or replaced, even the IR nurse was like, this can't be right, this can't be right, but it was. So that is one of the miracles that I've experienced in my dialysis career with catheters. Another thing with catheters is, you know, sometimes they clot. They clot and you have to TPA them for half hour. It delays treatment or they're positional or like just coughing. If that patient coughs, it can set an alarm and the pump will stop and then you have to go back there. And it's, it, you know, it's definitely like annoying for, you know, the staff member and the patient, but it also hinders their dialysis. When the pump is stopping a lot, it stops the process and kind of restarts it. So it's just the blood isn't getting as clean as it would as if it were a smooth treatment where the pump just kept going and going and going and going. Uh, what else? Um, if your catheter clots, like usually when you hook up the catheter, you should get blood return. It should push and pull easily. If it doesn't, you're not getting blood return. Flushing and pulling back blood vigorously definitely helps. But if that catheter is not working well with it when you're doing the saline flushes, it's not going to work well on the machine. So I recommend before before you even hook them up, even because sometimes I'd be like, oh, you know, let's just try it. Let's just hook them up and let's just see what happens. And that just ends up being more work. 
So when you have a catheter that is not working well, where I work, our clinic policy is every two weeks we can use TPA in that catheter. Um, first, the first thing that we do is we will put TPA into their catheter. Um, whatever the length of the catheter is, that's what you put in into both lumens. And it can dwell for half an hour. Half an hour is sometimes, it's like a miracle. It's all you need. You put in the TPA for half an hour, you take it out, and then the line is just like butter. It works beautifully. And sometimes that's not enough. Sometimes that's not enough and I need to call the provider and be like, this catheter is not working. I am not getting blood return. Um, it is very positional and they're not going to get good dialysis. And that's when you need to come up with another plan. Do we need to TPA it overnight? Do they need to have TPA in their catheter overnight and come in the next day? Or does their catheter need to be exchanged? It is what it is. It's not the best case scenario, but if you can't get dialysis, you can't, you need a different catheter. And that's my biggest advice with catheters is trust your assessment. If you are not getting blood return with that catheter, TPA, TPA doesn't work, it's time for an exchange. Because sometimes uh, these catheters will develop a fibrin sheath. And now this is bringing you back to nursing school. So let's see, I have two fingers here. And this is like essentially what the catheter looks like inside the body. You have two lumens, one's a little longer than the other. And sometimes it might develop like a fibrin sheath up here. And that is something that cannot be removed by TPA. So when you are sucking the blood out of the body, this fibrin sheath will go right over the catheter and hinder flow and it can it sometimes it's big enough it'll go over both of them and that's when like you're hooking them up and they're running fine you're, you have really good really good arterial and venous pressures and then your arterial arterial pressures go up and they go up because all of a sudden you're you're sucking you're sucking you're sucking and this fibrin sheath goes over it then you hook up and then you, you're like what is going on and you push and pull and you flush it again and you're like well everything's fine and then you hook them up and it's fine for a little bit and then boom that fibrin sheath goes back on there so what I do for those patients is I talk to the physician and be like, we TPA them. This is what's going on in the machine. Like it works for a little bit and then the arterial pressures go up. I think we have a fibrin sheath here and they'll be like, okay, um, we, we need, they need to get a new catheter. Can you do dialysis at all today? And sometimes with these fibrin sheets, if you have the blood flow lower, if like a 200, 250 blood flow, it'll kind of keep that fibrin sheath from going over, over the line. And that has worked for me, but that is, that is definitely a short-term solution. It is not a long-term solution. So the only solution for a fibrin sheath is a new catheter. And that's something that, you know, new catheters are a lot of work too. So you just really have to talk to the patient and be like, this is what's going on. This is why we can't fix it. And this is why you need to go in for an exchange. And this is what we'll do in the future. And this is, and it's, it's, I don't wanna say it's expected, but it does happen. Um, some of our patients who are known as, as clotters, they clot their line frequently, their line, they clot their catheter frequently where they need frequent TPA. Those patients will use a higher dose of heparin in their catheter. So some clinics just lock their catheters with saline. Some, our unit usually locks with 1,000 units per mil of heparin. And then for our patients that are, are the clotters, we'll use 5,000 units of heparin per mil. So th those are my thoughts on catheters, why I love them and hate them. Um, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.